Welcome to CivilNet. On September 3, 2013, Armenia's President Serge Sarkisyan, following a visit to Moscow with Russian President Vladimir Putin, announced that Armenia would be joining the Russian Customs Union. This was after three years of intense negotiations with the European Union to join the association agreement. This news came as a shock to most in Armenia and in Europe. Here to talk to us today about a research paper that was recently published is Dr. Varam Dermatevosyan. He is a PhD and a lecturer at the American University of Armenia, and Anna Durnoyan, who is part of the research team and an alumni of AWAY. Varam, Anna, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having us. Uh, Varam, so I spent the better part of last night looking at the executive summary of uh, this research paper, Integration versus Security. And you look at the reasons why uh, Armenia, or the president of Armenia, because there was really very little public discourse or consultation with the public about this radical U-turn in our foreign policy uh, overnight. Uh, you look at some of the factors um, that contributed, perhaps, to the president's decision uh, to turn away from the European Union Association Agreement. Um, the paper was uh, funded by the Norwegian Institute of International Affairs and the American University of Armenia. Uh, and it's important in this sort of process of this discourse that we're having. Why was it important for you to lead this team to look at these issues? Yeah, that was, uh, exa that was exactly the main reason uh, to do this research, try to look, uh, try to look at the reasons that caused the September 3rd decision to happen. Uh, so uh, exactly, uh, um, the, the the first reactions both uh, in Armenia and abroad were that this was a U-turn or, or a surprise move. But if we look to, uh, at the bottom of the problem, if we look at how the September 3rd uh, came to came to into existence, we see that there were many structural and institutional problems were, uh, out there that uh, were either underestimated by the um, decision makers or and by the public. Uh, and there were other reasons um, going back as uh, as back as ten years ago that were slowly pushing Armenia into that into that direction. Of course, um, one may counterpose a question saying that in that case, why Armenia was uh, so determined in its European path. But we have to understand that at some at some instance, Armenia the decision was made in a in a in a quick way, in a, in a way that I guess there wasn't much room for maneuvering. So, uh, so our, our uh, entire project was aimed to try to look why this happened exactly, under which circumstances this came into existence, and if and uh, because in the public discourse only the security issue was a dominant one. Everybody was referring to security, saying that it was a main determinant of the September 3rd decision, and later on, until the December December 4th of this year, when the Parliament ratified uh, the agreement. Until that, uh, this, the security discourse was the main dominant uh, do dominant issue. But if we look at, uh, deeper into the problem, we see that security is, shown, is only at the, at the top of the problems. There are many more issues, problems, concerns, threats, and, uh, and challenges that have been underestimated uh, for known or unknown reasons. Mm -hmm. um, Anna, when I was looking at the paper, aside from the security concerns uh, that were on the top of the list, um, there was also the economic issue, the energy security issue, and the issue of the Armenians living in Russia. You had presented a figure of almost 1.2 million Armenians who live and work in Russia, and then we also have a very large labor, migra uh, labor migrant population. Um, so there were those security concerns as well, and perhaps remittances as well, uh, that are a large part of our GDP, if I'm not mistaken. Um, could you talk to us a little bit about some of those issues, uh, aside from the security issues that I would like to get back to in a minute? Yeah. Of course. Uh, first of all, uh, I would like to highlight that, uh, as Dr. Termatovisan mentioned, we focused on the causes of the September 4th decision and Armenia's integration choices. And the most important causes, besides of security and geopolitics, was, as you mentioned, energy uh, security and economic dependence on Russia in strategic sectors. So uh, the trade agreements and the trade turnover between Armenia and Russia uh, demonstrate that Russia is the lead partner of Armenia in both terms of export and import, 
Also, uh, Armenia depends on Russian remittances or money sent from Armenia's uh, labor migrants in uh, Russia. So uh, these factors cannot be underestimated and uh, the Armenian government cannot disregard the dependence and uh, the issues of Armenians in Russia by, while making this kind of integration decisions. But I will also, I will also would like to highlight the, that uh, we focused on and we conducted interviews with members of Armenian parliament and that demonstrated that the majority of policy makers uh, and um, politicians are concerned about the security factor more than these kind of issues and they highlighted that Armenia uh, s tried to find uh, the security where it exists and uh, in other words, the European Union was not uh, the kind of security guarantor for Armenia and could not provide the guarantees. Therefore, uh, Armenia had to embark on the policy, on Russian foreign policy interests and to pursue the interests which um, go in line with Armenia's security interests. And though other issues uh, such as economy and energy shouldn't be underestimated, nevertheless, security is still the dominant factor in Armenia's foreign policy. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, I want to come back to the security issue because, you know, <clears throat> it seems that since the end of the war in the 1994 ceasefire, very tenuous ceasefire, we've seen examples of how that has been breached, you know, hundreds of times. Um, there is the thought in, in, in society, in civil society as well, that the government uses the security issue to keep the public in line, to say, you know what, we do have this, uh, we are still technically in a state of war with Azerbaijan, the security of our borders of nagorno karabakh are paramount to anything else, if we rock the boat, um, you know, things will uh, may uh, spiral out of control. My question to you is that when they started the negotiation process with the European Union, was the security issue any different then? So, uh, that, that's the surprise. You know, uh, Maria, the, 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 big quite, the big objective that we had in our mind, uh, um, in addition to the ones that I mentioned earlier, was to look at this issue from a th political science perspective, try to apply different theories and, uh, and methods, methodologies, in order to conduct the research as comprehensive as, as it could be, in order to try to unveil uh, causes uh, known and unknown causes of this um, decision. And when we brought all these findings together, we understood that um, that securitization of this issue, of the September 3rd decision, um, caused, caused uh, the politi politicians to bring this issue uh, uh, to the top of the public discourse. And, and uh, there is a Copenhagen School of uh, Political Science, uh, of Political thought, <coughs> which argues that when anything is uh, securitized, uh, that means that it, it, is, it is beyond any public discussion. It doesn't require any public discourse. So once again, the security, the physical security of Armenia was put in front of uh, all possible and impossible discourses in Armenia. Well, we can argue about the rationale behind that, uh, that move, that secu why security is still uh, an issue for us. Well, we can, uh, we can understandably refer to the Karabakh conflict, to the uh, increasing military budget of Azerbaijan, to the blockade imposed on Armenia by Turkey. Uh, we can go on and on on our arguments, but at the same time, wh what, is, what should come after the security? Okay, security, we have the strategic alliance, one of the great uh, powers in the world is, is Russia. Why security is still an issue? Who is, should be held responsible for this? Uh, narrowing down of the public discourse. So we want to expand this discourse. We want to say that we need more than security. We need more uh, public objectives. We need more um, objectives, targets. That's why we are, pu we are pu putting, um, we're pushing ahead this, uh, this argument that we need a development-oriented agenda. Okay, security is good, security is necessary, necessary but we, have we need to have something more. We need to have another target. Uh, we need to have what is, uh, what is this uh, Copenhagen School of so argues we need to have security plus because security is about survival and security plus is about development. So we want to have this formula uh, to, to be in place and to work. The question also that arises uh, in my mind is why Armenia had such so limited choices 
um, because obviously our choice was limited. Uh, you know, Anna, as you pointed out, our very sort of um, deep uh, economic, uh, I would even argue historic cultural ties mm -hmm. uh, with Russia. Um, in, in the course of your study, do you think that the European Union perhaps was uh, a little naive in its approach? To, I mean, we have to understand that the association agreement was not only with Armenia, it was with Moldova, Georgia, and Ukraine. Um, so these are countries that were in the mm -hmm. sphere of influence of Russia, as part, you know, former Soviet Union or former Eastern Bloc countries, and now all of a sudden they're being sort of uh, uh, catered to by Europe. Do you, did you find that perhaps Europe's um, um, engagement with Armenia or with these countries uh, did not fully understand those historic, cultural, economic, security ties? Uh, sure, this is the case. Uh, European Union doesn't, or even Armenia, hadn't demonstrated how much the dependence on Russia was important for Armenia's integration choices. But before coming to that question, I want to add to your previous question that why are the security became so important for Armenia at this point of time. Um, the most important issue that um, the observation of Russian foreign policy demonstrates that Russia was previously not that much concerned about uh, the Eastern European policy and what was going on with its um, shared neighborhood with uh, European Union. But as soon as in 2014 it constructed its own integration alternative and started to be concerned about uh, the processes which go on between European Union and it's a strategically important, uh, geopolitically and strategically important space. Uh, Russia had to embark and to uh, e execute more pressure on those countries to, uh, in order to not uh, lose uh, geopolitically. And that's therefore Armenia, Armenia's signing of association agreement and DCFTA became impossible. And what concerns uh, European and Armenia's choice between European Union and Russia and its impossibility to disregard Russia was the fact that the Armenian politicians and foreign policy decision makers has continuously uh, taken the decisions which made the dependence on Russia more and more deep. So we can uh, see that in 2001 and 2014 uh, has been signed the Asset for Debt Agreement and with this 80% of Armenia's uh, energy security has been uh, um, given to Russia and this made the uh, subsequent decisions more difficult. And also the same was the case in 2014 when R Gazprom uh, became monop the only exclusive monopolist of Armenian gas sector. So we see that the decisions have been made and uh, they were taking into account short-term interests and rather than uh, long-term Armenia's um, objective interests and uh, the, our politicians have been more interested in gaining tangible, some, something tangible and um, not to, uh, thinking about more uh, about the future of the mm -hmm. country and how Armenia was going to uh, develop. Mm -hmm. uh, Varam, it seems to be a common narrative in, in, in our policy and, and the way we conduct ourselves as a country is we look at short-term gain as opposed to long-term sustainability. Um, so, f what are the recommendations? What is the way forward for Armenia? Well, uh, basically, we came up with uh, two recommendations and a set of sub recommendations. The the first uh, issue that we want that we raised is to uh, to provide a long term, short term, mid term, and long term strategic development plans. They they cannot be uh, devised and implemented uh, instantly. The uh, the public should be widely and extensively engaged in this process because it's, it's a long process, it's an arduous pro process which requires resources, which requires uh, listening to each other, dialogue. Um, so I guess at one point we have to stop and l l uh, draw lessons from, from September 3rd as it is widely referred in, in Armenian public discourse and try to understand w what, what can be learned and unlearned from the September 3rd decision. Uh, so, the st devising this, uh, this strategic plan is one of the recommendation plans because we don't have the strategy of development in Armenia. Look, in 2007, we devised the Arme Armenia devised um, strategic uh, Armenian security strategy. So after after that, uh, already eight years have passed. So we have to think about a new security framework, 
Um, so this is a this is the first um, um, objective, uh, a recommendation that we came up. With. The second one is to to do deep structural reforms because these sluggish economic reforms, institutional reforms that have been taking place uh, since 2008, they had only marginal effect on our uh, society. We still we still see that every third in Armenia is below the poverty line, and those. Uh, uh, th those things cannot really, if uh, cannot go unnoticed by decision makers. They have to take into consideration. That's why, as Anna mentioned, uh, the Armenian government has to um, stop looking after short-term uh, tangible gains because, well, they are good, but th they are not the ones that our country can take farther uh, in solving the the problems that we face and our society faces. So the second, uh, the third recommendation that we have is that um, the, our institutional decision-making um, process should be r really revisited and rethought because the one that it, the way that it functions nowadays is is not the one that we deserve, because instantly all of a sudden to take a decision that Armenia is backpedaling from the EU and to get in, in, and is going to the uh, Eurasian direction. Uh, that uh, that was also surprising for many institutions in Armenia. So why the institutions in Armenia were not involved in that decision-making process? So these and other uh, issues, um, which are discussed in a larger paper, um, because the, the policy brief was only um, um, one section of our larger paper. So these old questions are addressed in our larger paper, and we hope that it somehow can be helpful for the decision makers and practitioners that. Um, in a, because we tried in a, to put all the reasons in one place to 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 go, to make a, to provide a good reference point, so that they can come come together and try to understand what were the uh, primary secondary causes of the September 3rd decision. Well, undoubtedly, uh, these kinds of uh, papers are so important for our own national discourse and for us to also understand. Um, not only the policy, uh, policy makers, the politicians, but also the general public as well, because there is a sense now that we are sort of backpedaling uh, to the Soviet Union, and, and there is concern among some sectors in our society, certainly in that regard. So I'd like to thank you for coming. Thank you for the paper. Thank you for it's us. available yeah. online uh, yes, so that is, people yeah. can um, access it and read it and try to understand some of the causes and factors that led to that decision. So thank you very much. Thank you once thank again. You. I'd like to remind our viewers that my guests were Dr. Varam Dermatevosyan and Anna Dernoyan. Stay with CivilNet.